Hey! Oh my god, hello! Where's my coffee? I just reached... <laughs> oh, shit. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know, my name is Lucy Moon and today we have Lucy Moon's 2018 review, which is basically when I didn't make any favourites videos for the whole year because I got bored of them, so now we're doing my ultimate year faves. So I'm going to start off with a high-low kudos uh, segment which I learned of my friend Shannon which is where you reflect on your highs, your lows and the thing you should give some credit to for your day, your month, your year. And then I'm going to go on talk about my favourite beauty, fashion, like media and then kind of internet moments, social accounts. There's loads of good stuff. I'll leave all of the time frames in the description so you can go and just click to the bits you want to watch because not everyone's that interested in fashion, not everyone's that interested in memes. I don't know why. So I've had a very up and down year, I'll be real. I think this channel has reflected that because I've struggled with like consistency and staying on top of everything. However, I've struggled with that the past year or two, but this is the first year I felt like I'm really finding my feet with it. So it hasn't been perfect, but I have made progress. I'd say personal highs for me, the obvious one is that I got to go to Paris Fashion Week with Dior, that was unreal, like truly unreal. I've been to lots of new places, which I think is really cool, including Australia. Like, like if you told me a year ago, like, oh, you're gonna go to Australia, I'd be like, lol, am I? <laughs> I've done a lot of work this year, which I'm really, really grateful for because it's all been brands coming to me, which is the first time that's happened. And I felt very desired <laughs> professionally, which is great. Oh my God, I released merch for the first time. That was so cool, which I'm actually wearing today and I completely forgot. I just pulled this jumper out. I forget it's even mine. I moved house, which is incredible. I'm in this lovely flat. And yeah, my life overall has been very good this year. I feel very grateful. Lows would probably be the amount of pressure I've put on myself and the stress. I've got better about putting pressure on myself, but I'm still not perfect. Oh, do you know what's been a low? Obviously my gut problems. Like I have no idea what's going on with my digestion. I'm currently getting tests for a bunch of things. I got a bunch of results back. It's not what I thought it was. So I'm just kind of starting from square one again. It's just, yeah, it's not been fun. I'm very lucky because my health problems are really minor relative to other people's, so that's good. Kudos to my manager, James. James has been absolutely fab this year, so shout out to him. He won't see this, probably. I doubt he watches my videos, but thank you, James. Kudos to, there's a really good train that's like six minutes into central London from where I live. That's actually been so useful this year, so cheers to that train. Cheers to Amy's Kitchen gluten-free mac and cheese. That's incredible. That has cheered me up so much on my darkest, darkest gluten-free days. Oh my god, and do you know what else I've discovered this year? Look, I grew my nails out. This is, this is the first time I've done this in years and years and years. I have so much trouble with it, but I've been getting gel manicures for the first time. That is a radical change in my life, so cheers to my bank balance for letting me be able to do that. Okay, all right, let's actually start this. I've tried to keep it very, very concise with each of these categories because I don't want it to go on forever and ever. My first beauty product that I've loved this year is the Hourglass Vanish Stick in Champagne Flash. This is incredible. This has been the easiest highlight to use. You can use this anywhere. I think it's a really, really good stick highlighter with this kind of powdery finish, but it starts off in a stick, so it's kind of creamy. I also just love Hourglass as well as a brand, so to find something that just suits me and my lifestyle really well, because beauty products can suit your face and your skin tone and whatever, but if they don't suit that you have to put makeup on on the train or you have your makeup done professionally all the time or whatever, like if they don't suit your lifestyle, then what's the point, you know? You can't carry around 15 huge palettes, even if they're great. Next shout out goes to Too Faced is better than sex, waterproof mascara. I think I've raved about this pretty much everywhere on every social platform I have, but one, the packaging's incredible, but obviously that doesn't matter. And I just love this formula to death. I think it's wonderful. It really suits my lashes. It's really good for volumizing and they actually stay in place. So I've really been into eyeshadow this year. Eyeshadow has been the constant theme, I guess, of my 2018. I'm just getting back into liner now, but I've wanted to find a really good, concise, neutral shadows palette that just suits me and what I do. Again, it's like a lifestyle thing. And the Marc Jacobs Scandalust palette has been that palette. My friend M Ford actually recommended this to me in December last year, and I only got my hands on it kind of midway through the year, but it's got, what, seven shades? Yeah, seven shades. They're these perfect warm neutrals. I just, oh. I absolutely love this and it's so easy to travel with as well. Oh, and also the big mirror. Big mirrors, so useful, straight away, see both eyes. I've used a whole bunch of lip products as well. I love lips, as you can tell. I like, I always have a different lipstick on. But one I've used the most consistently is the Glossier Generation G in Leo. I just throw this on, on any old day with a bit of lip balm and it just adds a little bit more fullness and color to my lips, which can look a little bit like plain. They're quite pigmented, but they can look a bit plain and dead. So 
this has been my absolute jam. It's this lovely warm brown. It's perfect for every day. It's very blotted, very subtle. I wish there were more sheer lipsticks. I think that's something I'm really looking for next year is like good quality sheer lipsticks. And then we have two hair products because I haven't been like mad into my skincare routine this year. I've tried a lot of products, but nothing has really set a gold standard for me, I don't think. So I'm still working on that. However, I do have two hair products. The first is the Purology Perfect for Platinum Shampoo. I also use this conditioner for the majority of the year because as you might remember, I was a blonde or at least at the bottom. And this stuff's just so, so good. It's expensive. You are paying the price for a sulfate free, good quality blonde shampoo, but, and it's cruelty free as well, obviously, but I just love it. It's also 100% vegan, if that interests you. Yeah, it just works. It just keeps your blonde so good. This, and then treated with silver shampoo afterwards. Mm. And then my second product is a styling product. I've actually found loads of styling products I love this year for my hair. But the one I've always reached back for is the Hair by Sam McKnight Cool Girl Spray. It's obviously suited for me. It's a texture spray. I have very flat hair. It works and it's half the price of the Orbe Dry Texturizing Spray, which is incredible, but it does a very similar job. And also the packaging's gorgeous. I love having this out in my bedroom. I think that's quite important with hair products. You want them to look like they fit in your bedroom as well. These are things most people probably don't think about, but I think about a lot. Next, let us move on to clothes. The first item of clothing that I have worn to death this year are my Topshop straight leg jeans. I really love them. I would say they haven't got the best like cost per wear basically because they, they don't last that long. But right now, I think they're a wonderful buy. I think they're really good quality and affordable and they, they've lasted me the whole year, so I can't really complain. They also fit women who look like me with small waists and big bums, proper pear shapes, really well. So if you're a pair or an hourglass and you're looking for some straight leg jeans, they are, they are top 10. I'm gonna make it my mission next year to really try and find a range of good quality jeans for people who are my body shape because it is so hard finding clothes that fit me. So if I can help people find clothes for big bums, then I fucking will. The second item, which I've had for absolute years, but I love every year and I actually think deserves a shout out, is my coat. It's from weekday. I wear it all the time. I'm trying to diversify my coats and my shoes and my bags because they have not had any love the past year but I have this big oversized black coat from weekday. You've probably seen it everywhere. I get asked about it in every video I wear it in. It's incredible. It's, I've had it for three years, maybe four, hasn't shown any signs of wear and tear. It's really good quality still. Oh, the pockets are a little bit broken, but I've stitched them up. It's fine. <laughs> I just think a good coat is so hard to find and I struck absolute gold with that. The third item is And Other Stories jumper, the one that you've probably seen me in in pretty much all of my videos. It's this kind of, beige brown mink color. I got it in autumn. I've worn it so much since then, at least every week. I love an oversized jumper. I love an oversized jumper. This one's so predictable. But finally, it is my Nike Air Max 95s. I've lived in them this year. But I just think when you find a good pair of trainers, you can just wear them all the time and they just feel like like really comforting and really homey. And that's what those trainers have been to me this year. So now we move to albums. This, right, everyone says the album's dead. I refuse to believe that. I love albums. I think they're great. There's this kind of middle ground that's grown a lot like this year especially, which is like projects and EPs. Loads of people put out EPs. So we're gonna do five albums, five projects. Might even be four projects, you know? It is actually only four projects. Also, all the albums I've picked are so obvious. <laughs> so don't expect anything really like radical or revolutionary in this. So the first album that I wanna mention is Georgia Smith's Lost and Found. I think this album is so incredible and I love an album where it all sounds like a concise body of work, which this one really does. If you like R&B and soul kind of music, if you like Alicia Keys or anything, I don't know, it sounds like really modern and also harking back to like 90s R&B. I think my favorite songs are Where Did I Go and Blue Lights, obviously. <laughs> Next album is Astro World by Travis Scott, which is incredible but it's so basic I feel like everyone's gonna have this on there because it was so like culturally like relevant it sounds so different but it's so well thought out it sounds like a collage of music I didn't look at the track list before I listened to it so for me I was just like constantly surprised and that set the tone for just how I felt the whole way through I love the fact it changes all the time I love the fact that it still sounds like a body of work even though it's so different all the way through if you haven't listened to this I'll be stunned but yeah, if you like hip hop and you like really innovative, interesting hip hop, then I think that's an album for you. My next album is Swimming by Matt Miller. 
I love Mac Miller. I was deeply, deeply sad when he passed away. And I think this album really represents where he was at in his life just before that happened. I just think 2009 as well as the most beautiful song I've heard this year, perhaps. It just makes me cry. <laughs> like, yeah, no one put on 2009 while I'm around, please. If you like hip hop, if you like laid back hip hop, this album is for you. Next album is the only Rogue one I've got. <laughs> it's The Last Days of Summer by Summer Walker. And it's kind of a, an amalgamation of all the singles she released prior to the album. And then, I don't even know if you can call it an album. It's like a project, but I, I feel like it feels like more of an album, if that makes sense. These all feel like they were written in a time of her life. They feel very, it feels very thought out, very put together. It doesn't feel like a mixtape or anything. And it's again, this really, raw, interesting R&B, which is just basically my favorite genre ever. Again, if you like 90s R&B, if you like 2000s R&B, and you want to see something, it's not necessarily experimental, but it's just good, <laughs> then you should listen to this album. The least surprising album on the surprising album list is Sweetener by Ariana Grande. I rinsed this album when it came out. I think it sounds, again, it's so fresh, and some people are like, oh, it doesn't sound like her, it sounds like Pharrell's B-sides or whatever. I think the approach has been really different for her, and I think it really laid the foundations for whatever is coming next, which, oh, I'm so excited for. Also, her singles are just so good. Like, God is a Woman is just so good. Now we move on to projects and EPs, because I think this is the format that has been most used by most artists this year. First up, we have My Dear Melancholy by The Weeknd, I love the trilogy weekend series from 2011. So this just floated my boat. If you like really dark R&B that's about breakups and heartbreak and cheating and all the fun stuff, then you will love this project. I, I just love really spontaneous records as well, where you can tell they went through something, wrote it, released it, don't want any singles off it. That for me is just the best. The next project is R.I.P. Bonsai by Kosha. This is Kosha's like debut as this new name because her previous name was Bonsai. You might have heard of her because she was on Mira Massa's projects. She's fab. And I think this is very experimental. This definitely sounds more like a mixtape, but it works. She has a really fresh approach to music. So if you like pop music, if you like experimental pop and experimental Indian R&B, I'd say indie and R&B, not Indian R&B, then this might be the project for you. Uh, my favorite song is called Rare Fruit off of that project. I think Rare Fruit is so, 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 so good. Next project is Runt by Slow Tie. If you aren't listening to Slow Tie, then I don't know what to tell you. I just really want to see him live. I, I don't even have the words. It's just really energetic and it feels really new and really interesting. Yeah, if you like hip hop, you will like this, I think. If you're the sort of person that watches Colours, then you'll like this too. I don't think I could name like a favorite song off that. It's like four songs that are all equally as good as each other. And the final project is Make My Bed by King Princess. If you haven't heard Talia yet, Talia is the single of the year. I think it's the best pop single that's been released. It's, oh, it's just so good, it's so like, anthemic and incredible. If you like indie and indie pop, that's just such a good project. Okay, film and TV, we're gonna do really fast. I've hardly had, like, consumed any film and any TV this year. I've been so bad. For me, music comes really easily. Film and TV and books is all, like, I have to prioritize it. But saying that, there are one or two things I've seen this year that have stuck out to me as being just great. In terms of film, I saw the MIA documentary and it was, oh, I just love MIA anyway, so I was already gonna be biased, but the actual documentary itself is a really wonderful exploration of what it is to be an immigrant, especially in the UK, and what it is to be a refugee, and how those things intersect with the media and with fame and with pop stardom. I really loved it. I really, really think everyone should see it. Next, I'm gonna say to all the boys I loved before, because, oh, what a lovely rom-com. If you ever wondered what my film taste is, it is like, indie rom-com comedy and that just I stay as close within that as I can maybe we go out a bit to like crime and thriller but generally we're back here and to all the boys I've loved before just fit that so well the final thing I watched this year which wasn't Kardashians <laughs> or whatever else I was watching oh I watched the people versus OJ at the beginning of the year that was great but that was made the year before the only series that I really really fell for like really hard was somebody feed Phil is the most wholesome wonderful program it is about the man who wrote everybody loves Raymond going and traveling and tasting loads of food with all of his mates and people he meets along the way. He goes to a different country in each episode or a different city in each episode and explores all the food there. And it's so well researched, so well done. Oh, I just love it. I love everyone in it. It's so wholesome. 
I also love the way that he addresses like conflicts or issues that that area or region has within the show. He doesn't shy away from it. Oh, it's already looking way darker in here, but I just took a quick break to go and find my social media accounts that I've been really loving this year because there have been a whole bunch, but I don't really wanna just yell names at you. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of talk about the kind of things I've been enjoying on the internet this year. YouTube's been a really weird one because especially towards the end half of this year, I've noticed I'm not subscribing or watching as many personalities anymore, but I am watching loads of newspaper-esque content. So like from channels like Complex and Elle and Glamour and Vogue even, those kind of channels, Refinery29. I don't know if I really want it to be that way. However, at the moment, that is what's being consumed by me. But what I'm really, really loving at the moment and have been all year is video essays, especially about culture, music, and politics. I just think they're so interesting. Obvious shout out goes to Vox. Vox are incredible, but also, and I'm gonna read some of these out, but also channels like Genius, they're like another big company. And on a smaller level, The Most Unruly, Jake Zeman, Nerd Writer, Volksgeist, that therefore they're just four of the many. <laughs> and then in terms of the big brands, I really like Glamour's money series where they get women to sit down and talk about what they make in a year and how much they spend each month and they just talk you through it. And then when it comes to Instagram, I'm following just a lot, a lot, a lot <laughs> of fashion bloggers. That is just the trend of this year for me has been fashion bloggers. And there are so many incredible ones, so I'll list them below, but I'll highlight two in particular that I love. One of them is Chloe Plumstead. She's wonderful, she's so cool. And whilst also doing incredible fashion content, she also does really funny Instagram stories where she asks her audience a question about dating or romance or relationships. And they answer very honestly because it's all anonymous and it's really, really funny. She posts the answers and she comments on them and they're so good. And then another fashion account that's very different from the other ones I follow is Diet Prada. If you don't know what Diet Prada is, which I didn't <laughs> until I came across it earlier this year, it's an account run by, I guess, like one or two people, which kind of calls out the fashion industry on its bullshit, um, especially high fashion. So when the Dolce & Gabbana stuff dropped, they had a huge uh, part in making all of those accusations public. They're not even accusations, like they're screenshotted evidence. Basically, don't buy Dolce & Gabbana. They call out people who are copying and ask about, you know, how much is copying and how much is like inspiration, drawing inspiration from people. They are so interesting. I really love their commentary on high fashion because it's something I find quite inaccessible otherwise. So I feel like they keep me up to date on what's going on. Oh, race through that. And then I'm just gonna tell you my top three memes because these are social media moments I've very much enjoyed this year. My first fave is Alison Hammond knocking one of her co-hosts slash assistants into the water when she was presenting the weather on Good Morning. Was it Good Morning? On oh, this morning, my bad. Oh, that just made me laugh so much. I must have watched that video so many times now. It's how apologetic she is afterwards. Oh, so good. The second one is Charlie XEX yelling at her audience. I thought this fucking song was big in Germany because that's just the best video in the world. And then third, maybe my favorite, is Nadine Coyle saying flour <laughs> on whatever baking show she was on. That was so funny. I totally took this idea off my friend Lan. She has a full list of like her 10 fave memes. If she's gonna publish that, I'll link it here. If she's not, then we're missing out on like eight more quality memes. I think I've doubled up on one or two of them. I think we've done it. I think it's been like, I've recorded for maybe 45 minutes, but I've got everything covered. So that is my year review. Oh my God. So thank you so much for watching. Remember there is a video every other day going out on my channel in January because I wanted a really ridiculous workload. Why have I chosen this for myself? I don't know, but I'm really excited for it. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a wonderful new year and I will see you in January with a new video.